Let's take a look at the gradient options here in Adobe Illustrator. We're gonna create a gradient background. M is the shortcut key for my rectangle tool. I'm gonna to click out here and make it the size of my artboard, which happens to be 1920 by 1080. Press OK. Obviously, I have a stroke around instead of a fill. I could just swap these two by clicking these arrows. I could get rid of one or the other by selecting them and clicking none right here. But I'll stick with this, where I just have a fill on my rectangle. Now I'm gonna center it up on my artboard, so I'll click it and just press these alignment tools. Now we have it centered. We actually have a gradient tool. The shortcut key for that is G. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't to where I can click on my rectangle and it adds the gradient. It took like five clicks for me, so I don't know if that's finicky in Illustrator right now, but if you have the gradient tool selected, you can also add a type of gradient over here. We have three types, linear gradient, radial gradient, and freeform gradient. Linear gradient's pretty easy. It's gonna go from one to the other. Now with the gradient tool, I can actually select where that starts and stops by clicking and dragging on this rectangle here. So I could start and stop that linear gradient from anywhere. Let's just go left to right like it had it before and let go. Now with this gradient tool selected, if you look at this line it draws across here in the middle, we have a beginning color and an end color. Now the gradient itself goes between the furthest out colors. So if we bring this white in, the gradient only starts where this color exists. After that, it's all pure white. Same with this, you can tell after this black, it's all just that swatch. So if we bring this all the way out, our gradient's actually gonna run from one end to the other. These little black dots allow you to adjust where the edges or the bounds of that gradient are. Actually, the one on the left moves it and the one on the right, you can scale in and out and you can always redraw that gradient if you want to. The diamond in the middle is basically which color has more influence on this gradient. Does the black have more influence or the white? So it starts to transition a little slower until it hits this diamond and then it transitions a little quicker to black or vice versa. The other thing you can do is click these three dots and you can see your gradient right here and you can actually add colors to it. So I could add a different color in the middle here. It added whatever color was there already. I can double click on that gray and change it to a red. So this goes from white to red to black. So I could add whatever colors I want on here, but I can also change the colors out here. You see, I have these color swatches. If I double click on them, it opens up my swatches panel or the palette or a color picker. If I wanted to color pick this gray color out here, I could do that. Now we go from gray to red to black, and we can even adjust this opacity as well. So what if I wanted to go from red to the same red, so these two reds, but I wanted this red on the left to be more transparent. I could just double click on that and change the opacity to zero and press return or click outside of that box. Now it looks like white, but if we click and drag this rectangle up, you'll notice that it's not white. That's just white because our background color is white. It's actually transparent. This red has two swatches here, one in the middle, one on the left, and the one on the left is 100% transparent. So no matter what color is underneath it, you can actually see it a little bit better with the gray, and you can definitely see it when it overlaps here, how it goes from red to transparent. So that's how you can add in transparency to your gradient. Now, if I wanna get back to edit this gradient, make sure this fill is selected. You can grab the gradient tool, everything pops up again, or you can see this over here and, and adjust the gradient here with these three dots. And we can change the angle of our gradient. That actually adjusts depending on where we draw it, but all these tabs are here. This is kind of like the original way to mess with gradients, but now you can actually use the gradient tool to change the angle and change all the swatches out here. But if you wanna mess with it over here, you can do that too. You can remove a swatch just by clicking and dragging it a little bit further down. You can also click on it and click the trash can to remove the swatch as well. This gradient can apply to a stroke if you want it or the fill. So if we have this rectangle selected, you can see the gradient is on the fill. We can actually also have a gradient swatch or only a gradient swatch. Hard to see right now because the stroke weight is one. But if we increase that stroke weight to something a lot larger, like 50, you can see how that gradient actually applies to the stroke now because we switched those swatches. And you could apply it to both if you wanted to just by clicking and dragging. So there's a gradient on the fill and a gradient on the stroke. Now you might have to make some adjustments here if you want it to be exactly the same as each other or I would just include the gradient on one or the other. In this case, we're gonna look at gradients on the fills from here on out. So I'm pressing G for my gradient tool again. And now that you know all the basics, we can actually switch this gradient to a radial gradient. So radial gradients are gonna start from the center out in a circular pattern. Wherever we click and drag from is going to be the start and end 
of that radial gradient. All these other swatch options, everything else applies the same as it did to a linear gradient. It's just in a circle out. So all the different edits and everything are the exact same here. Now, one thing you can do with the radial gradient is skew it. So this is 100%, but we could do like 50%. And you can see how now instead of a circle, it's more of an oval shape so you can make that adjustment there i'll go back to 100 you see it's more of a circle now the last gradient we have to talk about is a new one it's called the freeform gradient i also call it a mesh gradient what it does is it adds points out here that are kind of like their own little radial gradients with a blur and you can adjust the intensity of each of these points so you could have multiple gradient spots out here and you can see that I have a little plus icon. So I could click and add another point. I could change the color of those points by double clicking on them and, and grabbing a different color from my swatches. So like I could grab this purple color, purpley blue right there. And now I can bring this around so you can move these points around to wherever you want these gradients to apply. You can click and drag their intensity. So how much these influence the other points, bring them closer to each other, and they'll all just kind of blend together. It's a really cool way to create gradients here with this freeform gradient tool. Now our gradient tool defaults to just adding points, but you can add lines. And what that means is from one point or one gradient swatch to another, you could add a line like this. And that's gonna create some definite interesting effects here within your freeform gradient. You can press the escape key to stop that line, and then you can change how these gradient points affect what's going on and how the different points blend with each other here in your gradient. It's a really interesting way to sort of add different effects here to the gradient that adds this gradient along these lines. It's almost like creating a gradient along this circle that kind of blends with the colors that you select within it. You still have these points out here that you can move around as well. And if you go back to your point options, you can click on them, you can drag them around, scale them in and out just like that to affect how these different colors blend with each other. So a lot of options here with the freeform gradient. I tend to like to just add points. I think the lines are a little bit confusing as far as control and how exactly they're affecting each other, but you can use that too if you want. Now the other thing here is you can change the opacity once again of the different points as well to show a little bit of the background if you want to. So whatever you have selected, you can then come into the options and change those in here or get rid of those points as well. Those are the different gradient options here in Illustrator and the different ways that you can blend them together and use them within your designs.